Hello, my name is Katerina. I'm an educator at Museo de las Américas. Today, I will be taking you through our mural crawl through the Arts District on Santa Fe. Throughout this tour, we will discuss some of Westside's history, the difference between murals, street art, free walls, and graffiti and tagging. We will also highlight some of Denver's well-known Chicano artists and hopefully inspire you to be on the lookout for more examples of public art in the city. Our first mural is by Emmanuel Martinez. Martinez is originally from the neighborhood. He has artwork all over Denver. In this mural, you can see a combination of Aztec and Spanish Catholic imagery exhibited in the presence of the Aztec temple in the background, skull imagery, as well as the purple corn, maiz, and in the sacred heart on the forehead of the tripartite head, respectively. The faces and tripartite head also combine aspects of the indigenous, Spanish, and the Chicano, a person of Mexican-American descent. Chicanos found a connection to indigeneity because of their mestizo heritage. Martinez also incorporated parts of the building's appendages and other features into the artwork, making a pipe on the wall a paintbrush in the mural, for example. Moving on, we have a large mural on the back of Kitchen Ink Tattoo, painted by Marc Martinez in 2002. This mural was graphed out and includes signs and symbols that relate to the local neighborhood and easily recognizable land. Further down the alley is Su Teatro, whose walls are graced with the works of students in Carlos Fresques' 2011 and 2013 classes. Fresques is a professor at Metro State University and is also a well-known muralist and Chicano artist in Denver. The two art classes that created these murals went through the same process most artists experience when they do public art. They were supervised through the stages of doing commissioned work, meaning they had met with the director of Su Teatro to discuss what he would like represented in the mural in order to align with the standards and values of the organization. The next mural is on the side of El Noa Noa called Love This City. This is part of a series of murals that the artist Pat Milbury conducted all over Denver. In this particular mural, the L was painted by then First Lady of Denver, Mary Louise Lee. Mulberry did a lot of work before starting his murals, ensuring that the colors and symbols chosen would reasonably reflect and fit in with each neighborhood where the mural was painted. The aim of the project is to celebrate the vibrant arts, music, and culture of Denver. As we move along the different alleyways, there are more murals, some of which have recently been painted over in the past year or two. That's the beauty of public art especially when it graces the walls of our city. Just like an urban landscape, murals and public art are ever-changing, and they, too, show their age in layers of flecked paint and additional tags or symbols in corners. Which brings up the discussion of tagging versus graffiti versus murals and how these pieces wound up on these walls in the first place. Some walls in a city are dedicated free walls, sometimes called legal walls. These are open for use, but permission needs to be granted before you can paint. Never work on any walls without asking permission. Otherwise, this is what we call vandalism, which is a criminal offense. Tagging is the act of attaching a label to something or adding to something, especially as an afterthought without any real connection. Sometimes a tag will be an artist's name or a symbol or phrase commonly associated with them or their work. However, most of the time, tagging is an act of vandalism, and it defaces the artwork on the wall. Graffiti is similar to tagging in that it is done without permission and in a public space. It is the addition of writing or drawings on any public surface. Graffiti and tagging are not a new concept, though. The ruins of ancient civilizations have ages-old examples of graffiti that people carved or scratched into city walls, much like people do today with chalk or paint. In a way, this is an act of leaving one's mark, even if it is done without permission and is illegal. 
there are many other murals on the walls. A mural is basically defined as a painting applied directly on a wall in a public space. Feel free to slow down and take a good look around. Our final murals are the ones on the side of Colorado Ballet, which was done by one of a very few female muralists in the city, as well as the murals at Metro State University's Center for Visual Arts. And finally, a beautiful geometric piece surrounding a parking lot. It is unfortunate that we do not know as much about these final pieces as we rely on local knowledge, the records of the city and businesses on whose walls the artwork appears, and occasionally the art artists themselves if their signature is present. However, their presence not only brings color and excitement to an otherwise monotonous city sidewalk or street, but they are creative expressions of history and memory and become distinctive identifiers of place or landmarks.